I came here, I think I came here, what, two years ago, maybe even three years ago, and spoke to the fifth graders at that time. And so you guys are a new crop. Now, last time I spoke, I didn't have pictures. This, this time I got pictures, so it'll probably be a little bit more fun. <clears throat> and we'll load them up now. But uh, I'm, a, I'm a surgeon, okay? I'm, I do both hand surgery and plastic surgery. You guys have heard of plastic surgery, right? Yes. Yeah, it's on TV all the time now, but I do all of that stuff, okay? And before I did all that, I did general surgery where I did a lot of trauma, like gunshots, stabbings, car accidents, all that stuff you see on TV when they rush them in the ER, that was me. That was me, I was the guy that they rushed in to see. So I had a pretty exciting life you know, as far as medicine is concerned um, for the last almost 10 years. <clears throat> but at one time I was sitting right here just like you, listening to somebody tell me about what they did in life. And believe it or not, um, my father's a doctor. However, it wasn't my father that made me go into medicine. It was sixth, seventh grade. You guys are in fifth grade, right? In sixth grade, I got to dissect a frog. Y'all know what dissect means? Yeah. That means it's a fancy word for cut open and look inside. A frog. And I cut open a frog, and I opened it up, and I saw this bright yellow stuff. Y'all know what that what yellow stuff was? Fat. The fat that you guys have, the fat I have too much of, if you open you guys up, it's yellow. And I mean like bright yellow like neon yellow, and that, and I was thrilled. I was like, what is this yellow stuff? It's like neon yellow in this frog. And my teacher's like, that's fat. And once I saw that, I was like, man, this is pretty cool. I got another animal, a couple, like a, when I was in ninth grade, it was a pig, I got to uh, dissect, which means, you know, like I said, cut open and look inside. Dissect a pig, and I thought that was very, very cool. All right, here we go. So, how did I get to be a doctor? Well. It's all about education, school. School is how you get to be a doctor, how you get to be a surgeon. And it's a long route, I'm not gonna lie to you. That's my route up there. Four years of high school, I'm from the area. I grew up in Oak Cliff, but I went to Green Hill School up in far North Dallas. Um, then after that, I went to Morehouse College for four years after that. You got, if you wanna be a doctor, you gotta go to college, okay? And uh, see, that, that's me and my buddies in college. College is hard, but it's not that bad. Do we look like we're having a bad time? Or do we look like we're having a good time? I think we look like we're having a good time. I'm right, right in the corner. That, that's me, right there. Then, after college, after the good times of college, I went to medical school. Medical school is not so much good times. It's kind of hard, it's very hard. But you can still learn a lot, meet good people. And uh, I look back at my medical school and I, fondly. Um, it's, it's, it was, you know, you learn so, so, so much. So I did that right here in Dallas at UT Southwestern. Now that's four years too. Then you go to what's called residency. And it's really in residency where they teach you how to be a doctor. Okay, everyone thinks you, you finish medical school and they hand you a Ferrari and you just make a bunch of money. Y'all know what a Ferrari is? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you do. <laughs> but no, they, but you don't. You finish your medical school, you say, hey, I'm a doctor. And they say, here's the check. That means you can like basically pay your rent and eat, <laughs> get in that room and go work, and I don't hear any, any lip. So you go in your residency, and it's almost like school all over again, except you get paid a little bit of money for it, and they work you to death. <laughs> okay, you work hard in residency. Like, 100 hours a week or more. But that's what they actually teach you. Take your scalpel, cut here, sew this, do that. Where they teach you how to be a doctor. In your med school, you kind of read a lot of books. But when you're in residency, you're working with real people, real patients, you're putting bones back together, you're tying vessels, you're stopping bleeding, you're doing all that stuff, okay? And if you finish residency, then you know, you're a doctor, you can start your practice. Some people, like myself, are kind of a glutton for punishment. We just love to learn. <laughs> so you go and you do additional training in your residency or your, uh, at, behind, behind your residency, and that's called a fellowship, okay? And that's when I did my hand surgery for a year, and I'm finishing up my three years of plastic surgery. So that's a lot of school, right? It's a lot of school, but you kind of need it because you want your doctor knowing everything about you, right? You don't want to go to the doctor and the doctor say, I, don't, I have no clue. <laughs> 
That's what you don't want to hear. Education, college. How many of y'all going to college? Good. I want to see all those hands up. All right. If you want to be a doctor, you got to go to college. Really, nowadays, if you want to do almost anything, how, let me phrase another question. How many of y'all want to make a lot of money? Okay, yeah. <laughs> nowadays, if you want to make a lot of money, not just in medicine or doing anything, you got to go to college, okay? Now, college, is college free, y'all? No, it's not free. You got to pay to go to college. However, college can be free. Okay, did y'all know that? When I went to college, guess what? Didn't pay for it. You know why? Because if you get good grades in high school, college can't be free. I'm not joking, that's, that's the honest and goodness truth. Colleges want smart kids, they do. Makes their college look better. So if you do well in high school and college, you can in fact get a scholarship and go to college for free. I went to college for free, my father went to college for free. Uh, you know, you can do it, all right? Uh, once you get there, you gotta, t usually, if you wanna be a doctor, you can do and take any course you want, but if you wanna be a doctor like me, then you gotta take a bunch of science courses, okay? Things like biology, you know what guys know what biology is? Yes. For those of you who don't know, biology is kind of the study of things that are alive, okay? Humans, cows, plants, okay, any kind of cells, things that make up living things, biology. Then you got chemistry, that's like the study of chemicals and physics is a study of how things relate with, you know, it, how forces relate in nature, but the, all those things are important, okay? So we're heavy science guys, doctors. So, then you go to medical school and you learn, even, you learn about like, not just all living things, but people. You learn about you learn anatomy, by microbiology, pathology, anatomy. You actually get a whole cadaver. You know what a cadaver is? That's a whole body. Some person donates their body, as in they die. But they say, I'm going to donate my body. And your first day of medical school, you walk into a room with a tank. And you open up the tank, and guess what's inside? A dead person looking at you. It's a little weird. I have to admit, I'm a big, rough, and tough former football player. And when I opened that tank and saw a dead person looking at me, I was like, wow, that's a little odd. And then, not only is the dead person looking at you, they say, here's a knife. <laughs> and guess what we did to that dead person? We dissected, yes, we did, every part from the toes to the scalp. We dissected every little part, every nerve. Your heart, I've had them in my hand. Yes, your lungs, all of that, we dissected from day one, okay? And then after med school, of course, we do the residency. We talked about that. That's where they teach you how to be a doctor, whether you want to be an orthopedic surgeon. Orthopedic surgeons are special doctors that do what? Work on bones, okay? They put nails and screws and bones. All your bones, if you break them, anyone ever broke a bone? None of y'all broke a bone? You guys are healthy kids. Okay, well, I have. I broke many a bone. <laughs> and they put you back together. Whereas OB-GYNs, they're different doctors. You know what they do? They deliver babies. And then what? We have what? General surgeons, people like me, who fix people who are in car accidents and things like that. Okay? So that's where you learn how to do different things. And your fellowship is, like I said, highly specialized stuff. So who can be a doctor? That's right. It's a great, great answer. Anybody, 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 anybody. So that means you can be a doctor, okay? And everyone gets up here and they say things, and you can do it, you can do it, you know, anybody can do anything. But I've been in fifth grade before, and some of y'all thinking, please, that's for them other folks. <laughs> I know what I can be and what I can't be. My brother's this, my sister's that, father's this, mom is that, and that's probably what I'm gonna do. Maybe, but that doesn't have to be what you're going to do. You can do anything you want, and I really believe that. You can be a doctor. Yes, you can. So I don't want anyone to leave here not knowing that, yes, you too can be a doctor. I think it's one of the best things in the world to do, but you might want to do something else, but you can do it. Just know that you can. So things that you, things are probably running through your mind or if you get older, it's like, can I be a doctor? Yes, you can. But 
what if I don't like all my science courses? Because you just put up a slide there that said all these science courses, chemistry and biology, guess what? I like science, but I hated physics. I did. I hated some of my science courses. But sometimes they put courses that they make you take that will have nothing really to do with your end goal, but they make you take them because they're related and to see if you can do well in them. I'm serious. A lot of courses I took I didn't like because I knew they were important. Some things you're gonna take that you don't like, they're important for you to take just so that the teachers can see she can handle this hard stuff or he can handle this hard stuff. I hated physics, still do. And biochem, oh my God, horrible. But everyone, what about good grades? I told you, if you get good grades, you go to college, you don't see anything you want. But it's hard to get good grades, right? That's right, and everyone can't have good grades, it's hard. But if I don't have good grades, then I can't go, right? Well, if all your grades are bad, it's probably gonna be hard on you. But every once in a while, it's gonna be tough. Sometimes you're gonna have a, a hiccup or a mistake where you don't do well in the class. That doesn't mean that you can't do well the next time. Have any of y'all, who here has failed a course, failed a class? Me? I'm not talking about, the, I'm not talking about a, a, a test. I'm talking about the whole class. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They feel like, not me. Well, guess what? I have. I have. But that doesn't mean when I failed that class, I'm just done. I'm out of med school. I'm out of, never going to do it. That's not, that's not true. No, it means, you know what? Guess what? You got to work harder. <laughs> you got to do it again. You got to find out how the other person who passed the class did and learn how to do it. So don't think because, oh, well, I didn't do well this one time. I could never do it. Yes, you can, okay? You're looking at someone who did it, all right? Uh, people tell me my school isn't good, all right? I don't buy that either. I grew up with a bunch of people who went to a school that was supposedly, quote, unquote, not good, and they all did well, not, okay? So don't let anyone tell you, oh, well, you came from this school or that school. You have to be, you have to be like Dr. Clark, you have to go to Green Hill. That's not true. When I went to medical school, I went to a very good med school. But was it the absolute best med school? No. And do you know, I went to Morehouse College. How many of y'all heard of Morehouse College? Like two. How many of y'all heard of Harvard? Yeah, pretty much all of y'all, right? Now, I'm going to ask this question. I don't believe this. But what's the better school, Morehouse or Harvard? Yeah, so they tell you. But yeah, OK. I think Morehouse, but you know, that's, that's my opinion. But when I went to med school, guess who was sitting next to me in my class? Someone who graduated from what? That's right. And where was he next to somebody from? Morehouse, OK? So when you go to whatever school you're going to go to, know that as long as you do well, you'll be sitting right next to the Harvard folks, all right? It's all about you and not about your school, OK? So you can do it, all right? I'm going to tell you a story about a buddy of mine in a little second. Med school's for rich folks, right? No. My father's a doctor. My father didn't have no money. Mm -mm. My father grew up in a, where his house had an outhouse. Y'all know what an outhouse is? When you don't have plumbing, when you don't have water, you have the number two, you can't do it inside because you ain't got no plumbing. So you go to the outhouse. That's what an outhouse is. It's a building for number two. And he went to med school. He had no money. So I'm telling you, you can do it. Don't anybody tell you, well, you don't have any money, or you did this, that you can do it, trust me. I, you're, you're looking at the product of all this. This is my man, Dre. Good buddy of mine. Y'all like Dre? He's, he's from Chicago. He's got his Bears jersey on. He's got his sunglasses because he's cool. He's got his wild hair because he says the ladies like that. But this is my man, Dre. Dre went to Morehouse with me, OK? Dre got me through general, he got me through general biology. Okay, because I was hurting. I got a couple C's, and I was like, Dre, I'm supposed to be a doctor. I'm getting C's. I got two C's on a test. And Dre was like a genius. So, hey, when you're ever you're struggling, go hang out with the smart guys. <laughs> That's just a general rule, okay? <laughs> so I hung out with Dre. And Dre basically got me up to speed and taught me general biology. Now, Dre grew up in Chicago, rough Chicago, okay? Dre, I was complaining about my room once in college 
because I was mad my AC didn't work well. Dre said, its room is great, because it was the first time he had ever had his own bed. Not bedroom, his own bed. Dre's mama's on crack. Y'all y'all know crack? Yes. Dre's mama's still on crack. I talked to Dre this morning, actually, OK? Dre's mama's on crack. He had no money. But Dre was smart, very smart. He got him a scholarship, went to Morehouse. That's where we became friends. And guess what Dre did? Went to medical school because he was smart and he was determined. And get not only that, he went to Yale. Y'all heard of Yale? Yes. Yeah, y'all heard of Harvard. He went to Yale. <laughs> yeah, Dre's a bad boy, you know? So, I mean, granted, I'm not going to sit there. I'm not, I don't like to lie to anybody. I like a lot of kids. A lot of the things I did, I'm very, I was very fortunate to have my father and go to good schools and stuff. But that doesn't mean that that's the only type of people who can, who can do it. Dre is a good friend of mine who lived, had a hard life, but did it because he wanted to do it, because he knew he could, because he didn't let anyone tell him what he couldn't do, okay? So I don't want anyone to ever, don't let anybody tell you what you can and can't do, because I'm here to tell you, you can, as long as you want to, okay? That's all it takes is you wanting to do it. The only person who will, the number one person who holds people back is guess who? Themselves. And that's true in life. That's true to teachers. Oh, I can't get the masters. I got kids and I need to work. Yes, you can. <laughs> OK. Oh, I can't start a new business. I'm 60 years old. Yes, you can. OK, the only person who's holding you back from doing anything you want to do is you. OK? It's not anybody else. And that's Dre, I think he went to Nicaragua there. He still got his wild hair, but uh, you know, he's Nicaragua uh, helping some folks. All right, so like I said, now we got cases. So last time I was here, we didn't get to talk about we, we talked about stuff, but I can show you pictures. So what do plastic surgeons do, guys? What's that? That's right, that's right. You break your nose in the face, we gotta, you're looking ugly, your nose is hanging on the side. Y'all joking, it happens. We put it back. What else do plastic surgeons do? If you get hurt, you get to replace it? Yeah, we got, I got a couple of those. <laughs> we'll start with that. Tongue reconstruction. Now, y'all big boys and big girls? Yeah. So we're going to talk about some big boy, big girl stuff. All right? OK. Who knows what cancer is? All right, good. Cancer is bad. Cancer's when something in your body goes haywire and starts growing for no reason. It just won't stop, it just keeps growing and growing and growing, okay? You can get it all kinds of places. But if you smoke, you tend to get it in your lungs and your mouth. Smoking is bad. I want you guys to ever start smoking. You see someone smoking, step away. Because if they're smoking and you inhale it, I'm telling you, cancer's bad. So this unfortunate person smoked a lot, and they got cancer of their tongue. So do you know what we do with cancer? We cut it out. I know. So that could be a problem with the tongue, right? What'd you say? How he talk. I like that. Perfect. It's a problem. If you cut out someone's tongue, how are they going to talk? Well, that's where the plastic surgeons come in. Because what, like, what did she say? That's right, when, when they have a problem with something, we redo it, okay? So, here you go. Whoa, 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 oh my goodness, oh my goodness. So, can you see that? Whoa, that is half of his tongue. That's half of his tongue. But, have no fear, the plastic surgeon is here. I'm going to build him a new tongue. That's right. I said I'm going to build him a new tongue. What's that? What's that? That's an arm? To me, it looks like a new tongue. It is an arm. It is an arm. But to the plastic surgeon, I see opportunity. I see a new tongue. What do you mean you see a new tongue? Oh, hold on now. Hold on. I'm going to show you. 
So we took this tissue right here, right there on this guy, and we took it off of him, his arm, and put it inside his tongue, and made him a new tongue. You want to see? <laughs> so we lifted it up, and then we sewed it into the other side of his tongue. Do y'all see that on the left? So all that tissue is now on the other side. This is where we. This is where the hole was. This is the new tongue. And that's him three months later. He's got a new tongue. He can speak. He can chew. I just need him to stop smoking. <laughs> OK? New, that's what the kind of stuff we do. All right. <laughs> OK, I got a question. What you say? Can he still taste? He can taste on the other part of the tongue that was normal. He can, but he can speak normally. He can speak normally. He has a good question. He said, what about the hair? Because it's a skin, that skin grows hair. Well, this particular area doesn't grow that much hair, but his hair will, in fact, grow in his mouth. Yes. Sometimes we do electrolysis to burn it off, but yeah. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. That's a good question. So we took it from here, put it in there. What are we going to do with this? Skin grafts. So skin grafting is when you take skin from someone's like thigh or anywhere on their body, but you don't take all of it. You cut like a, a half of it, OK? And you put that other half right on top of the wound, and it'll heal in. It'll heal in fine. Matter of fact, you're about to see a skin graft. <laughs> Does anyone not want to see the skin graft? Huh? <laughs> okay. I tell you what. But she don't want to see it. She doesn't want to see it. Okay. But what we will do, I'll show you. I'll show you a calf. You want to see a guy who does who wants calf implants? We'll, we'll, we'll talk about them, and then afterwards, the people who want to see can come see. Okay. All right. So, this was an elbow wound. This woman, once again. So one of the things about smokers, smoking is bad because it gives you cancer, right? That's just the tip of the iceberg. Smoking is bad for all kind of other reasons. One of the things that smoking does is when you, smokers don't heal well. Where if you don't fall, you scrape yourself and it bleeds, you get a scab, right? Smokers, it doesn't happen that way. Smokers, whereas you get a scab and, you, and it's healed in a week, a smoker takes like two to three weeks because they, they, their blood vessels are smaller, so they don't heal well. So this woman, woman, she got in a, I think it's a car accident, and she got an elbow wound, and it would not heal. It just had this open wound because she was smoking. So we had to find a way to close this big hole she had in her elbow. So when you need something that, to close a hole in, on a body, you use muscle, okay? Because muscle has a lot of blood in it. And blood is good for healing. So she had this big hole. Where are we going to find muscle to cover it? We got it from her back. So we, you see those bodybuilders, they lift a bunch of weights and they have their, their, their back looks like a big V? We took one of those V muscles, OK? And took it off where it is. Took it off. It's, it hangs on your spine, right? We took it off the spine and flipped it up and put it all the way over to her elbow. And it can reach that far. So she had like, it, it, it looks like actually a big steak. Muscle looks, that, that's what, you know that, you guys know that? Meat, meat is muscle, okay? Muscle is tasty, I agree, muscle is very tasty. But <laughs> if you get a steak, if you see a steak at a, at a restaurant or something, guess what you're eating? Back muscle. You're, you're eating back muscle from a cow. Huh? Yes, that's right. Okay, so, so you know it's thick and red, right? It's thick and red. So you can put that thick red stuff right over that, th that beefy stuff. It's red because what? It's got a lot of blood in it, okay? And blood is great for healing. So we, we took her muscle from her back, flipped it all the way over her elbow, and then put a skin graft 
on top of that, and it healed just fine, okay? Another guy we did, no, those are just wounds. That's just a little of what we do. We also do pretty stuff, like people who want to be more attractive, okay? People say, I don't like my nose. I, I, you know, I, I don't like my eyes. They're drooping. I'm aging, and you know, I got these bags in my eyes. Can you fix it? We can. We can actually make them tighter, make their face tighter. We can do those things. One of the guys I had, he he wanted to look more athletic. Do so you guys know what calves are? Your calf muscles. Okay. He wanted his nice, big, wide calves, so it looked like he had been working out and such. But he kind of had skinny legs. What do you say? Why didn't he work out? Some people don't like have time. <laughs> so. What we did, how can you make this guy's calf bigger? He can work out all, the, all day long, but he doesn't want to do that. Any ideas? He's got an idea, what's up? Close, but that's a lot of surgery. What we did is we put an implant. Imagine um, a big piece of plastic, hard plastic, but it's rubber, or not rubber, like imagine like rubber and plastic together. Okay, soft, but not soft, but firm. Okay, I'm trying to think of something like a, almost like a, a, a thick Nerf ball kind of stuff. Okay, it's called silicone. We shape it into his calf, and then put it under his normal calf, and boom! All of a sudden, he's got Arnold Schwarzenegger's calves. We do that as well. My job is pretty cool. I get to do a lot. I get to do a lot of things. Fractures. If you break your face or your hands, I get to do that. I get, I get to. I get to. I get to put plates. Yeah. If you break, you can break your face. Absolutely, you can break your face. Uh huh. You break your face. I've seen guys. The face looks kind of caved in. You have to go back and like pop it out. And then yeah. And then you put a bar on there to so it won't fall back in. It's a little bit like body carpentry, okay? I'm like a body carpenter sometimes. This girl, she's got her match like this. Yes, it, it, this is real stuff. Last time I was here, everyone asked me about where I'd operated on. I pretty much operated on everything you can think of. Everything you can think of. What kind of questions do y'all have? Over here. How are you? No, me personally, no. I've seen celebrities and other doctors work on them, but I, I've never actually put hands on celebrities. But I, I couldn't tell you even if I had. It's against the law. I can't, we can't talk about our patients. Like We can show pictures, but we can't actually put names up or talk about who we do or anything like that. In general, like, what would be your reaction when you, when you do surgery? My reaction to what? Like, like when you're doing surgery, like, are you nervous if you're doing that stuff? Um, most of the time I think, wow, this is fun. But if it's a, uh, sometimes you do really serious cases, you know? And then you are kind of nervous a little bit. Sometimes with surgery, you know there's no redos. There's no do-overs. You know, you have like, sometimes some surgeries, you know you got one chance to fix this person's problem. And you don't want to mess it up. So yeah, absolutely do I get every, and sometimes before I did plastic surgery, remember before I did plastic surgery, I did general surgery. And in general surgery, you're not dealing with just a wound or, or a fracture. You're dealing with someone who might die. That's nervous. I like to play golf. Golf is a game where a lot of people get frustrated because they, you know, they miss a shot. I don't get that frustrated at all playing golf because when you, someone's about to die and you're the only thing that's going to save them, that's when you get nervous <laughs> and scared, <laughs> not when you hit a bad shot. But yeah, you do. When you're dealing with someone who might die, and that happens, you do get nervous. Have you ever dealt with somebody that had a neck injury that might have Neck injury, like a big whole wound, or like they're paralyzed? Well, to answer your question, yes. Yeah, I've dealt with all that. I've dealt, I've dealt with um, 
I deal, we, we frequently deal with paralyzed patients because paralyzed patients get bed sores. You guys know what bed sores are? Bed sores are when you can't move. If you just lay on one part of your body, you'll develop a sore, a big hole, okay? And those need to be covered or they'll get infected. So we, they, they need plastic surgeons to do it. So we frequently deal with uh, people with neck injuries. Now, a big neck wound, dealt with that too. Um, a lot of those people who, a lot of the smokers or people who do dip snuff and stuff, they get cancer and the cancer needs to be removed. So you have to remove a, a good portion of their face or their neck and um, they call us to fix them afterwards. Broke their, uh, when I was a general surgeon, yes. I've broken my collarbone, actually. Collarbones, most of the time, don't need to, any operation. They'll heal up on their own, just fine. Um, that's usually uh, thyroid. You have a gland called your thyroid. It sits right here, it looks like a bow tie. And it kind of control, it's like the volume control for your body. When it's turned up high, you're sweating, you're fidgety, you're anxious, you're loose, you can't keep weight, you lose weight. When it's turned down low, you gain weight, you're lethargic, you wanna sleep all the time. And sometimes they grow really big. Mm. Why I picked this job? Because when I was dissecting those frogs, I thought that operating and dissecting animals was fun, I thought, humans will be a lot better. That's the honest and goodness truth. I would like to say it's some, it's some great, wonderful, you know, grandiose reason. But the truth of the matter is I thought operating was gonna be cool and I thought the fact that I got to help people was like an added bonus. But I enjoy doing surgery. Like seeing the fat, seeing the muscle, I enjoy that, I think it's pretty fun. And like I said, the fact that after you're done, guess what, people feel better and look better. You know, people who have these big wounds, you get to cover it. I mean, people get broken bones in their face or their jaw, you get to fix it, they can eat, they can speak. That guy with half a tongue can now speak and eat. That's fun. It's fun to help people like that. Has anyone ever died? Yes. That's a bad part of being a doctor. Uh, if, you know, no profession is perfect and everything has its bad parts. And one of the bad parts about being a doctor is you do in fact see people who die. And uh, that's not fun. And then to have to talk to the family is tough. But it's, it's part of our job. It's an unfortunate part of our job. But yeah, I have, many times. Yes? Have I had to do what? Have I ever had to work on someone's eye? Yes. Yes. <laughs> when they get facial fractures, a lot of times they, they, if they, they break their socket, the bones can lock around their eye and their eye won't be able to move. So you'll ask them to follow, you, you know the doctor says, follow my finger with your eye, right? And both your eyes go back and forth. Well, with these people, you'll say, follow my finger with your eye, and their eyes will do like this. <laughs> that one eye would just stay, if real. And you'll see it trying to move, it really goes like this. You know, it, it, but, but you can tell it can't do it because the bones have been broken around it so that it's locked in that eye. The eye muscles can't turn it around. Look at this teacher squinting like, oh! <laughs> but yeah, we, that we go in, we, go, so we do surgery, and we make an incision like right underneath their eye, and we put, fix the bones, let the eye breathe, and then, and then it goes back and forth. That's another bad thing about being a surgeon. Surgeons are people and they make mistakes. They do, we do, we do. And have I made a mistake on somebody? I have. I've never made a mistake that cost someone their life, thank God, but I've made mistakes that the patient had, to, had a bad thing happen to him before. I have. Doctor, yeah. question. Yes. You know, last time you were here, you talked about motorcycle accidents. Yes. How about you cut on the brain yeah. The leg, uh -huh. cut off an arm. Why? Motorcycle. <laughs> motorcycle. Yeah. I, this is mad. I, I hate motorcycles as much as I hate cigarettes. I really do. I, I used to want one until I did, until I became a doctor. 
<laughs> really, I, I, I thought most actually, I was like, ooh, that's cool, I wanna be cool, I got some boots, I got ready to go. All the ladies gonna like me. And then I started doing trauma, and you know what I saw in the trauma bay? Like every weekend, motorcycle riders who needed brain surgery, who had to cut, amputate their legs, their arms, because they're on that motorcycle and they go high speed, they hit something, boom! And their arm hits something and the arm is like, in bad shape. I tell you guys, don't get on motorcycles, like ever, <laughs> really. Don't smoke, don't get on motorcycles. I've seen, I've seen people who can't speak for three months, for three months. They're, they can't speak, they just sit there, in a, they're alive, but they sit there in the days. I saw one guy for three months, first word he said was thank you. I, that's, that's a true story, but it took him three months to say that. Ugh, get on, don't get on motorcycles. Okay, this one. Have you ever got what? Vomited? Vomit? No. So there's some of us that really enjoy this kind of stuff. I'm one of them. Some, some of y'all think I'm gross. Y'all think this is gross. That's fine. But there's some of you guys in here who think it's very cool. <laughs> I'm one of y'all. Okay, I'm one of you guys who thinks it's very cool. When I make a decision and I see that yellow fat pop out and that red muscle, I get excited. I'm like, woo, look at that. <laughs> when I see blood pumping and then I stop it, I say, oh, that's pretty cool. You know? So do I, do I vomit in surgery? No. Have I seen other people get dizzy and all that stuff? I have. That's okay. I mean, I get dizzy when I see, like, you know, Excel bank files. It's like, oh, Lord. I, yeah. We all have our gifts, okay? <laughs> some people like numbers, some people like nature, and some people like body parts and things, you know? Some people like to cook, some people don't. Talk to my wife, but you know. <laughs> we all have our gifts, we all have things we like to do, but I'm one of the guys, like I said, the few of you guys who thought those pictures were cool and really wanted to see more, I've been that way since I was a kid, just like you. So we'll go through this. So, so the guys, we'll, we'll go through this. We're, we're, we're gonna go through this kind of fast. It's almost time for you guys to go. That elbow wound I was talking about—that's a wound. We took the muscle from her back, put it to her elbow. That's a skin graft. That's a skin graft. Okay, on top of the muscle, and that's her. Six months later. That's her elbow like this. Okay? She's still smoking. Before and after. Before and after. Huh? Car accident. Car accident. Finger. This guy had a wound on his finger. I forgot why. But uh, there it is. We took the tissue from his other finger on top. Flipped it over. Flipped it over to the back side to cover the, the, the tendons. And then he'll, he keeps his finger like this for six weeks. He's, he's like this, really, for six weeks. And in that amount of time, he can grow new vessels and we can cut, we can separate the fingers. And we skin grab the top. And lastly, our calf, oh, you can't really see, but he's got the skinny calves. And so that, that little white thing, that's a sheet of paper. That's where we're gonna put the implant, okay? And we open them up, and that's the implant. This is the implant right here that we're sliding into his calves. And now the his calves are nice and round, both sides. <laughs> that's the fun, I, I have a great job. That's the fun stuff I get to do. That's my family, so. You guys have been fun. <laughs> Thank you. I, 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 I.